Greg, Mark, good to see you guys. Juan, Rochelle, good to see you on here. Federico, Johnny, good to see you on here too. Let's move this over here. I'm actually doing something different, hopefully, tonight. We'll find out here. I am live streaming on trading view system tonight guys uh i don't really do this on a uh, zoom webinar and so i'm actually doing zoom and live streaming this at the same time i'm hoping to be able to get this to just live streaming only uh on here the only thing that i do not know let's see one thing I don't know how to do yet is public screen capture. Alright, I'm going to have to pardon me guys. Stream has ended. I'm going to have to play around with this on a different day. I can't do it on a normal day. So let's go back over here and see if you guys. Yes, desktop share. All right, can you all see the screen okay and everything? You all hear me? You can see my dog running around in the background with her toys. <laughs> all right. Um, tonight, ooh, I am I am on a different. Uh, I'm on the trade the fifth one because I was messing around with that uh, live stream thing, but I wasn't able to figure out how to share the screen so you guys can see it on the other side. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to go on setting up a new workspace. Uh, I've have been I've been asked this several times on setting up a new workspace. So here we go. That uh, you are going to hover over this top left button. It's going to display the current workspace that you're currently on. You're going to go over here. Any saved workspaces you have are going to be in here. You're going to go down to new layout. It's going to pop open a new tab. So I'm going to close the other one just so it doesn't need a lot of data that it's on there. I've been gone for like five hours. So my dog is like supercharged that I'm home. So when you open up the screen, the first thing it's going to come up to is just a blank empty chart. Now over here on the side, uh, Paul's already got all the futures that are on here. Um, you can save, like, let's say he's got on here stocks for the fifth wave, stock breakouts, uh, stock swings on 60 minute. You can make a list of whatever you trade on a regular basis and then save it in here. So all you got to do if you're on futures, you can just click it down, click your stock selection, and it'll be on there. Okay. That to, and it has the ability, I've never used it before, of importing a list if you had like a huge list. Uh, but I don't know. And you can rename it uh, from futures to W5T futures or whatever you want on it. So we already have it on here. So I'm going to go, everyone knows the ES is my favorite one. We had a good day today. <laughs> but let me show you how you put these on here. That you're going to go up here on indicators. Right here, indicator strategies. You're going to click that down and then you're going to go to my scripts. 
And these are the ones, or invite only, these are the ones that are gonna be on here. Now, this will be a little interesting because Paul's got different ones on here. So we're gonna hit Elliott Wave, that goes on there. We need the oscillator, false breakout, roller coaster, uh, bias version two, and I don't know which bits. I'm gonna take the bits that has 29 likes because that must be the newest one, I'm guessing. So you get done, and here they are on the screen. But whichever order you click them is the order that they're gonna be on there. So I don't like this order. So, all right, who, hold on. who's got their hand up? Uh, Rochelle, if you could type your question on the side, that'd be awesome. Uh, but I'm gonna, let me run through this setup here and then we'll take questions here in a little bit. So I don't like this setup. Like we have, this is the bar count down here. I like it up top. I like uh, my false breakout down below. So all you do is just, they disappear, but if you hover over here on the right hand side of the screen, I can, this is the bias. All right, so I can click it once and it goes up. I can click it twice, it goes up to the top, okay? Then I can grab this line right here. I can shrink it down because I don't need to take that much real estate space up. All I need is big enough to see those green dots. And this is your bar count right here. And this right here where the blue letters are, okay? And then the rest of this, I like where it's at, but I want to make it a little bit smaller on the stochastic and, or excuse me, on the uh, oscillator, 535 oscillator, and then down here. So I'm going to shrink these up a little bit so that I have more space up top for my charts. All right. Now, once you have all these things on your chart, instead of happening every time you open up a new workspace and you're like, I gotta click all these buttons to put those on there, which it's way easier than some of the other platforms where you have to completely delete them off uh, to show up or go through a bunch of menus. Uh, you can, this button up here takes off all the settings that are on here. So once you get these done, you can go up here and hover over indicator templates and drop down. Now Paul's got these on here He's, he's saved some of them, but I'm going to save a new one. That uh, save indicator template. Click that template, and I'm going to name this W5T indicators JW session. That way, you know. I'm not going to click save interval because I don't care what interval it is. I want them to show up on whatever interval I'm on. This way, Paul knows this is the one that I did. But you can save it in here. Now, now that I've saved it, all right, now you go back up here, click on that indicator templates again. And when it drops down, you will see W5T indicators JW session. There's an empty star right there. And if you hover over, it says add to favorites. Click that star. And now, when you click off of here, hover over it and see the W. Now I don't have to go into this add indicator, add this, click this, click whatever. All I got to do, now let's just open up a new chart. Let's just say, hold on a second here. Let's go over here to, that's on here on all of them. Let me just open up a new workspace. Oh wait, we don't want WFT, we want treating view. We're gonna go all chart layouts. And it's not going to let me do a, we're gonna have to just pick one. Then we're gonna click over here and new layout. All right, so now that I've saved this, all the W5FT indicators in here, if you look on here, all I got to do is click this W one time. 
and every single W5T indicator that I saved in that package is on here. Which is awesome because you're not clicking all over the place. The other thing that I love about TradingView, if you come over here on the left hand side, if I want to turn off Elliott Wave, turn off Roller Coaster, and turn off Bits, I have a blank chart. Uh, I know on Thinkorswim, you have to go in and physically delete it completely out of your workspace and then physically add it back on if you want it to disappear. I don't want to take it off. You know what I mean? I just want to look at a naked chart and see what's on there with nothing on it. And then, you know, add in roller coaster that uh, we're on five minute time frame. I mean, look at that move. That was a really good move, 1450. That never went. Well, we're on DAX. Let's go up here to ES. Actually, had a good move on the ES. Oh, hold on, guys. Let me click on. I'm going to mess up Paul. He's going to hate me. I had to click this thing to Chicago time. I was like, it was showing us 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, man, it's not 2 o'clock in the morning. This should be to five o'clock, 17. Okay, check this out. So we open up at five o'clock. You already had a roller coaster um, signal to go short earlier at 15.10, was so three o'clock, 3.10 when the market was closing. And then, 1700, then we, we go up just a hair and then shoot down for this breakout move comes back stops out and then you get another breakout move that thing only went 31 19 25 only went four ticks five ticks negative but 31 19 and went up to 31 26 20 plus 20 plus ticks not a bad little move in what are we on a five minute time frame 25 30 minutes I mean that 5 10 15 20 minutes uh so once you get these indicators on here, now they are on here. Now we're going to, I like to shut everything off and we're gonna go to a daily time frame. And you guys know I like my channels. So I'm going to go down here to regression trend. Hold on a second. Where did it, here it is right here. His is in a different place, but I'm not going to move it. So regression trend. And then I'm going to drop it right down here at this pivot low. You can see right here, I'm going to drop it at that candle. It's going to calculate the candle anyway, so you don't have, you know, if you click it, one millimeter top or one millimeter bottom below where I'm clicking, it's not going to make a difference because it's calculating from the candle. I'm going to go to the current candle. And let me do these settings. Duration two minus two. Open high, low, close divided by three. Visibility, I want it on all. And that, if you look through here, two and minus two, I don't know, that's the ones I like. High, low, close, divided by three. Style, you can pick the colors that you want. Now, since this obviously, it, with all the different colors of other stuff, you may not want that on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. basically no channel and then I'm gonna do a let's leave the base I'm gonna leave that actually a solid line in the middle and then the upper channel I'm gonna take that color away I'm gonna leave it blue and you can pick whatever color you want but let's leave it blue and but let's make it a dashed line and we're going to do the same on the bottom. And we're going to take that one out. 
let's actually on that, let's keep that a dashed line so that on this channel, I want to know, this is a daily channel. So we have been, we have been operating in this channel since March 23rd. So April, May, we've, we've been, we spent two months respecting this channel. Look how tight we have stayed in that channel on a daily. Same way with the bottom. And then this center line has been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days before we've gotten above this. Now we're going to go right click the settings for this. Let me try this again so you can see this. You're going to right click that channel setting, go down to settings, and we're going to click extend lines. That way we see this channel as it goes down the road. And visibility, you can, if you don't want it to show up, like some people don't want their daily chart to show up on a five minute uh, or a five minute chart to show up on a, a daily chart. You can uncheck whichever time frames you don't want them to show up on. Um, and then you can turn around, save as, and we're gonna say JW daily channel. All right, now we have done this. Now we're gonna go to another time frame. We're gonna go to four hours. And if you notice up here, see where it says one, two, three, five, and daily. Well, if you want your time frames that you use on a more regular basis, just click the drop down menu. And on the side, you'll see the empty star on whatever time frame. I wanna add four hours to here, okay? So I click out of here, it goes in order, uh, minutes all the way up. So we're gonna click to a four hour chart. I'm gonna scroll backwards and that daily shows up. So now I have, we're framing the chart of what's going on on this ES chart. We're looking at the bigger picture time frame of the daily time frame. And then now we're gonna come in and I know this is what the daily channel is. Now I want to do a 240 channel. So I'm going to click this regression trend or regression channel. Now, if you look, if I click templates and I drop down, there is that daily channel. We're going to have to create a new one for the 240. Okay. So I'm going to leave it as it's going to draw the same colors as I have right now, but we're going to change that. And I, I really want to go from the pivot right here for this 240 going up. If you were going to draw like a super, uh, let me, let me just drop this channel real quick. Well, it did it automatically. Let's blow this up so you can see it. See how, let you see how I was just messing around and I was just trying to get the mouse to go away, but it picks that channel and it dropped it down. So here is a 240 on the, the current pivot right here. I wanted to go down uh, down here to this pivot and go from there. But here is from May 29th to current. Doing pretty darn well. This candle right here, this is before you even put our indicators on. This candle right here was your signal for a long when we came up, we finally busted through. Look how long it's been since we've got past that center channel line. We finally closed above there. The next candle open went down, barely went up, but look where it stopped. On that center channel line, it's been respecting that center channel line on a 240. On a, and we're in a daily time frame on the big channel. Next candle opens up, dips below, doesn't go as low as the candle next to it, and comes back. They're just off the trading channels. That's your long signal to go there. And that was at 30.93 and we went up to 31.29. So 33 points, 132 ticks, something like that from there. So um, we're gonna change the color of this one. So you right click it, hit settings. Let's try that again so people that can see it, sometimes people miss it. Take your mouse, just touch that channel line, right click it. Click settings, and then you're gonna click inputs. And I like my channels on high, low, close, divided by three. And if you look, 
See how I tightened them up around there? Watch when I go back to close. See how it widens it out? And you can see that we touched that to the tick. Uh, and these are very close. That one touched to the tick. High, low, close divided by four really narrows it out. But it also helps you see the wicks, and that's where big banks and institutions are trying to push it back in the direction they want. Um, I like high, low, close divided by three. That's just me. So before we, now we need to change the color. So now we're going to go over here. And we're going to change this one to, we're going to leave it red. And we are going to use solid lines. We're going to change this one to red. Solid line. And, oh, let's go back up here. We need to lighten up the color so that it doesn't show it. Just click on the body color. And right here, if you see how that, see how it gets dark? We're going to take that away. I don't need to see the body color of it. And then same thing with here. We're going to take that upper channel away. And then the bottom channel line, we're going to change it to the red also. And we're going to leave it solid, but we're also going to take any color that's from there. All right. Now I know this red is a 240. So now we're going to click template, save as, 240 channel, JW. Okay, click OK, and it's there. Now you also have to lock these. Just right click any of the channel lines and lock them. That way you don't accidentally grab the channel and move it. I've done that before. So, oh, and let's say right now we're framing the chart. You don't really need any of this stuff down here right now. Go up here and click this little box right here that says Maximize Pain and it drops all that other stuff off. It's still there, but it lets you see the screen up here. You can also click the um, symbol list. You can click that off, click it on, and now you have an entire screen to work with where you can see a lot, 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 lot of what's going on. All right, so now we have drawn this channel. Now we also have got to settings. I forgot to click extend lines. If you look at this, excuse me, you want to be able to extend the lines so that you can see this channel. Um, if we end up staying in it, uh, you don't want it to end right where you're at. Now I don't extend it when we do the fourth wave pullback and I'll show you that here in a minute. That So we're going to extend this out. Now I need to save as the 240 channel JW again to replace that so it remembers it. 240 channel JW. It's going to say, do you want to replace it? Yes. Click OK. Now, every time I select a channel, I can click 240 or whatever I want. All right. Now we know what's going on. Now we're on a 240 minute, four hour chart. But this blue line with white dotted is our daily time frame. This is our current 240 time frame. Okay. And then now we're going to drop down, down to an hour. Bella Hush. We're going to drop down to an hour. On Trading View, I like all you got to do is just zoom farther back and your channels will show up. Uh, now, when you get down into like two minutes and three minutes, you're not going to be able to, I mean, it would take you so long to scroll backwards to find your daily lines. But if you're trading off a two or three minute, you don't really care where those lines are at at the time. You're looking for opportunities inside there. So now I've got, if you ever get all messed up and you can't figure out where you're at, and you're clicking around on the screen, just hover right down here and you'll see this little uh, reset chart. It takes you back to the current, current where you're at which is awesome. All right. So we know now we're on a one hour chart. We know the blue, the white, and the other blue line are, is our daily uh, channel. We know this red line is our 240 channel. Now look at the difference of what you see. Let's go back over to the four hour, okay? And look at, well, you gotta touch this side here before you can drag it. 
look at this candle inside of here on this 240 candle. It kind of looks like indecision. Um, I don't know, almost a doji that, uh, of where it's at. Now drop down to that one hour and you can see that the candle next to it is taking, almost taking it out. So now we're on the one hour. We know, let me scroll farther back, our daily pops up on there. So I know right now, this is our center channel line of a daily. Look how we bounced around on there, okay? Not only did we bounce around on the daily, we also on this current trend, 240, we found heavy resistance right there. I mean, look how long we spent there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty. 12, almost 14 candles times four hours. Or excuse me, we're on the hour chart. But 14 hours that we spent basically just going sideways, just rotating up and down, up and down before we got that breakout outside of here. Now, let's turn on, let's just turn on a roller coaster just to see it if. It popped on, on one hour. Let's go down to five minutes. Scroll back more. I'm trying to get this sometimes if you make it, scrunch it down. See how you go back and it's like, it's almost impossible to get your daily on that five minute, but we have the 240 and that's what matters right now on this one. See how it goes sideways? Just click your button, takes you right back to where you're at. So what this is looking at on a five minute is we have a possible roller coaster short on five minute time frame. And here it goes. This one. Now let me click over here. Let me look at let's see here. If we're gonna isolate on a five minute, 1035, 1450, 1500 is three o'clock. So this was the high of the day of yesterday, of the day. So we're gonna isolate, if you look over here on this candle, I'm gonna isolate off that candle 3124. So we're gonna turn on Elliott Wave, and we're gonna click this sprocket, and we're gonna to go to 3124. Click okay. It takes about five to seven seconds. We'll get there. And so on a five minute, there's a possible short for a fourth wave pullback, possibly. If you're looking at the long term of this, we know we're in a 240 channel. If we go all the way down to the bottom of that channel, look where it's at. It's right in the green. So it's looking like that could be a nice fourth wave pullback. Now with this um, roller coaster breakout here, that's a possibility. Our bias, long-term higher time frame bias has gone to yellow, which is good because we went from the green to the yellow. Our oscillator is getting smaller and smaller on the 535 on the green bars, which usually if we're going to go, if it's going to make a turn, it's going to make a turn there. We've crossed over on stochastics. You have another arrow here to go short on there. So we've crossed over. So we have some good reasons to go short not quite yet on this one so we've got all those now let's turn on bits now I'm going to take these labels off take these labels off and save that and then it takes off that entry level and you can see your screen a little bit better okay we have right now on a five minute we have we have a bits 
indication to go short where if you look right here, let's turn off roller coaster so you can see this clear as day. The cyan line has crossed over and crossed past the yellow. Okay. Then on top of that, we are below the 6-4 moving average, which is the blue and red line. Okay, once we cross through, look what we touched. We touched that yellow line, which is like a point of control. It comes back up on the next candle and retest the bottom of that 6-4 and then drops, which we dropped 31-21. 3116. Okay, we've gotten this little doji here. I don't know. I'm thinking these purple dots right here are a point of control. I'm thinking we're going to come back up here and touch one of these uh, these edges of this 6-4. I haven't gotten a red dot right here on the bias to go short yet. So I'm going to wait on this one. And this may play around all freaking night long because we're in the evening session. Let's go down to three. Three minute, got you in way back here, 3121 also. Two minute, two minute got you in, 3122. Now I don't trade a one minute, but our, wow, it crossed over 3124. Well, let's go back to five minute and it crossed at 3120. So one minute actually got you in five points ago, 20 ticks ago on just using that. Now we're on a five minute. This is yesterday's, now taking those labels off, let me right click, turn them on, labels. Yesterday's close. All right, so we can see Look how much resistance that we've had right here. Let me take this back off labels. Now we're above it. It's like I was telling you, there's doji, went down and tested it, keep going. I'm not ready for this short yet. Then long on your roller coaster. I just, I think we're gonna come back up and test this yellow line, and then probably that 6-4 moving average again. It's a five minute candle, guys, so we only have three minutes and 48 seconds left. I did the L8 wave, uh, wave count on a five minute, Tricia, that uh, I personally myself don't like taking a Elliott wave on a higher time frame, like say an hour or anything, 30 minutes too much can happen inside of a 30 minute candle for it to turn ass backwards sideways on you. You know what I mean? Where you end up losing, uh, and then it ends up stopping you out and going your way. Um, uh, one of my things that I tell you guys every Wednesday is see how we actually started. And I didn't take the trade. If you notice it was like, Oh, we got a signal. No, I'm not going to take it. I wait until we come back. And I call this a first step. I'm not going to take this trade until this thing comes back and goes outside of 31, 15, 25. Now, I may be an idiot and give up some stuff around here. Uh, man, we're hovering right over that close. Like, you can't get above it. Push and blow. But I wouldn't take it. Bias is still there. Your... 535 oscillator, tiny green line. But look how many candles ago we crossed. And if you look down here where it says stochastic crossed over, where it's giving you the okay to go short, look where, if you look at this white line that goes up, look where that's at. When we dropped below the bottom of the 6-4 moving average. Like, it's like clear as day uh, on there for that. So now let's turn, where's my Elliott wave? Let's turn my Elliott wave back on. We can see that we got stuff down there. 
Now look, now we've got on our oscillator, look how the um, candle has pushed back down. Oscillator, we're getting our first red candle. Um, I'm gonna take a chance on this one. Do, 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 I think. I have not used the company. company. Actually, here, hold on. Let's just do paper. I think we're gonna do paper. Yep, there we go. We'll do a paper trade. Now we've got red and we've gone below that line. So I'm just gonna take one. We'll do a stop loss of 15 ticks. And we wanna do a market order. All right, so we're in this one. Nah, and then if you want this to go away, you just click the little arrows and that goes away right there. Now I was telling you, I think, it's, I think it needs to come back up and test the 6-4 moving average. I don't like trading at night because it's like watching paint freaking dry, but uh, we did get this first red right here. Now let's go back to a two minute. And what do we got on a two minute? Two minute actually looks pretty decent. We got the first line to come through, first bar to run through that 6-4 moving average bottom. Came back up and almost retested it. And then if we look to the left, let's take a roller coaster off. This is this could be our bottom for another bounce back up because we spent a lot of time uh, somewhere around 3112. That this one may be a short scalp on it. Well, let's turn roller coaster back on and see what we got on there. So we don't have a new roller coaster move going down yet on a two minute. Three minute we do that actually a nice one um, 3120 so we're 20 ticks ahead if you took this one straight out just a little bit ago really 1915 um, there was a nice I mean 20 ticks out of that on a three minute now Paul doesn't have four minutes on here so let's add if you want to add one guys let's see here down here at the bottom I'm gonna click four and that's minutes and click add now it shows up in the chart click the uh, star click out of there now i can go to a four minute now four minute had you back over it started one back over here earlier at like three o'clock so i don't like now see this is where this is where my gut, where I told you I didn't want to, and I wanted to wait until I came back up and retested that. Six, four, and look where, I don't like a roller coaster move that's like this. If uh, if it's playing around up here, I don't usually take it. So if I would have checked this four minute, I wouldn't have placed that trade on this five minute. But we are going back up, and we test this. 6-4 moving average bottom. It's going to stop me out if we make it all the way up there on it. But we did get a second. Even though this has climbed up, we've got a longer oscillator bar down, which is good on it. Bias is still yellow. So we're good. We'll just let this thing play out while we are here. And then let's take off roller coaster. Let's take off bits and Elliott Wave. You actually have a little short arrow right there that came up. Pop John there. So, all right, so we're back to zero, 1250. I'm going to draw a little channel from here to here and extend this. Oop. Extend lines. All right, 
I'm just going to leave that. So you can see what this five minute channel looks like. Jumps on. If the screen jumps like that, guys, just hit that arrow right there. Uh, Tim, let's look on here. I wanted to see where we're at on this five minute channel. We've pretty much stayed in there. I mean, we've came out, but it pushed back. We couldn't break a new high there, and we went clear to the bottom of that five-minute channel. And we went sideways, came back up, pushed all the way down close to the bottom, back up again. We got, uh, we'll see if this thing drops down. Um, so turn on roller coaster. And now look at roller coaster on this channel now. Now that I have a five-minute channel, that you're looking for shorter time frame opportunities on here. Now, granted, if I scroll all the way back, there we go. Now, okay, now I can see my 240 channel lines, which are those red ones. We are probably, and I'm, there, there's no guarantee ever in trading, the, um, but we are probably gonna follow this channel right here, this five minute channel we should follow this thing back to this center channel line that uh, I don't know if we'll hit it while we're talking um, on this event or, or it may take off like it's doing right now. But, uh, I think it's going to stop somewhere around that channel line and look at this roller coaster indicator. It gave you a signal basically when it popped out of that center channel line to go short. Now we went sideways across the channel, came out of it, and then to push it back down again. That's what I think. Let's go to four minutes. So Tim, if you go backwards here, you look at, are you in the groove? On a four minute, no, not in the groove. That a uh, little, Little win, little, 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 it's um, little win, li very little. I like moves like this one where, and all right, look at this as scrolling backwards. The, we're on a four minute chart, but these are 240 minute lines. So these are high time frame channels and you're getting a signal to go short at the center channel line of the 240. Look how strong it was and look where it went, almost to the freaking bottom of that channel. And it, it actually did, it came back up, stopped you out right there and then finished making its move. It did another roller coaster move and finished what it does. Typically when we break a channel line, it goes from one end to the other. Like this one touched the top, went all the way down. Didn't quite hit the bottom, but came back up, hit the center channel line, bounced back off, we made it through. That a lot of times though, I don't like taking uh, center channel line trades because I'll get chopped up on them. Uh, but this one was really, really nice. Uh, that breakout was right on the center channel. So that was a good move. Let's go back over here. Where are we at on this one? Oh, let's go to three minute. Scroll back. Look at a three minute of being in the groove. Um, what you do to place that order is you just click this button right here, the double arrows that say up or down arrows, uh, Tim. And then you can do shorter, long, market order, stop, whatever you want. Put your stop loss in, however many ticks. And then you just hit the buy button. Once you take it, then it shows up up here. Now, let me show you what happens if you forgot to put your order in. And let's just say, I'm gonna take the stop loss off. And you accidentally, you're over here, you're excited, you place your trade and you forgot to click the stop loss button to add it. You are not out of luck. If you hover over the one, See how it says protect position? Just click that button, 
click stop loss and you can add it on there. I'm gonna go 15 ticks, modify and look. Now our stop loss is back up there. And that is funny because our stop loss is right at the, on a three minute. So a three minute has us in a roller coaster down from, and the signal was at the top of the five minute channel line to go short. Then we go to four minutes. We are breaking back out of the four minute. That's a big V going up there. I don't like that, but it is. And then let's reset up here. And what time is it? Let's see if we can ride this one out before we get done. Uh, this one I think is going to be a slow mover going down if it hits. Um, If you see here, the oscillator bars are getting longer and longer. Even though this candle's pulled up and shown green, look how we came back up, touched the bottom of the entry price for that roller coaster move, and then it came back down and it was sitting there right on that channel line. But we're getting a heavier bar for a short from there. Our stochastic down here has not like hooked hooked back around to start going up. So I like the way that that looks. I would like to see a red dot on here um, to take this trade, but we'll see. We're sick 50 bucks ahead on one contract. What is that, five ticks? I think it was at, yeah, 62.50. So 75. Let's go back to that three minutes. Okay, on the three minute, we're on that center channel line going down. 87.50. Let's take this out. All right, now if you saw here on the bias, it blinked red. Um, it's really up to you, Tim. Uh, on this one, if you wanted, uh, if you're gonna take this move, let's just move it up here to two ticks profit, modify it. I'd rather for um, this demonstration, I'd rather let it ride because it's probably gonna come back and stop me out and then the damn thing will take off and go like a rocket uh, down. Like this is my thing, uh, Tim. You can move it to, usually when it breaks out, uh, like up here, when this thing took off out of here, if I took that trade, I'm gonna leave my stop loss at the entry plus one tick. That way it covers your fees. Well, once it takes off, it goes down here and you're you know, 20 ticks ahead, you're 250 bucks ahead. I'm gonna move that thing to like $100 minimum uh, to protect it uh, before it goes out. Now see, like just stop this out. What I was saying on that is if I'm 87.50 ahead, if you're going to move your stop loss up, just take the, like, I would just take the whole 87.50 um, out of there because it's going to do exactly what it just did, come back up and stop you out. And then now you're faced with, this is where people get chopped up now because then they're like, oh, I got stopped out. I need to get back in again. And now... And look, this thing's going to take off. And what may end up happening is this may turn around. This may be the end of it. But uh, you just never know. Told you we'd probably go down to that center channel line. We're getting close. Uh, now, you do have an arrow over here. Your stochastic is starting to. We came back up, hit the bottom, came down. Still got a nice, big, uh, deep, even deeper red bar on there than that one. Let's go to five minutes. Yeah, your five minutes still looking good on it. So yeah, I mean, take your 87.50, um, not a bad little trade while you're on here for a few minutes on it. What time is it? We have 48. What other, um, let's go back here for the, for, on the five minute. 
and bits. Let me see what we got here. Bits is still looking good. That uh, it's still going down. Elliott Wave, we got a ways to go, guys. We got a ways to go. So let's see if we can get those 240 lines. And there is your 240 line. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to, but if we follow this channel line, it may go up, may go below. 2,100 hours. You guys mark that on your calendar, or if you're still up watching stuff, see if we end up pulling down here into this uh, move down here. Uh, now, that's no guarantee it's going to go long. You know what I mean? You never know what may happen. Uh, European session, Hong Kong, Tokyo, uh, they... They may mess it all up and may zing it down. All right, now look. Now we've got a bits entry for a possible short right here at 3111.25. Bias dot. Man, I want a red bias dot on there so bad. Because a lot of times we bounce off of that uh, bits breakout and it'll turn around and go back up from that. So it's either really strong uh, support or resistance if it's going the other, other way. And I like it to come through. I'm thinking we're gonna bust through, touch a center channel line, come back up, retest that green and then go down. This is a long-term one, uh, you know what I mean? Throw five micros on it. When it gets to, you know, your $200 ahead, take $100 off and just leave the rest overnight and see what happens. That's what I would do. All right, uh, Rochelle, what question did you have for me? Where did you see where you went? Hi, hi, hi to everybody. Let's see some typing, guys. We got 10 minutes. Hey Tim, did I get that? An did I answer that good enough for you? Okay, good. That uh, I just want to make sure that uh, and everybody else that's on here, don't look, uh, don't think that you look stupid asking a question or anything, man. The only way you're gonna learn is asking. You know what I mean? And I'm here. Trading View Rochelle is just a different trading platform. Um, some people link their trade station accounts to it. Um, there's multiple, um, brokers that you can, let me log out of here. These are the brokers, Rochelle, you see here at the bottom, uh, trade of eight, Wanda trade station amp. Uh, I have an account with amp, uh, alpaca. I don't know anything about these other ones, obviously forex.com is forex. Uh, but you can check any of these, uh, you can check into that. So screenshot that if you want. Uh, it's just a little bit easier platform, Rochelle, I think, um, to use. Um, and if you want a second set of indicators for a private message, me and I can get you a discount on them uh, over the regular price since you already own our indicators. Yes, Frederico. That uh, yeah, no, no multi-platform licenses, buddy. I don't think there is anybody in the, <laughs> in this business that at least at least I haven't found it on all of them. But uh, I can get you a very substantial uh, discount, Frederico. Send me a message and um, yeah, no, no, it it's uh, about forty percent off, Frederico that uh, send me a message and I'll get you a code for it. Same way, Rochelle, if you want one. Yep, if, you, if you've got my email or you can message me off of Twitter uh, as well. And like, let me, oh. there's my email guys, jwstyle at tradethefifth.com or at 
Snell W on Twitter, you can send me a messenger. Yeah, I mean, Trisha, uh, like for instance, right now, let's take, uh, take off the bottom of the screen and look right now. Let's take off bits. Let's take off all of those. And let's see if we're gonna retest this. What you can do, if you go up here, see this screen button right here? It has one screen. So let's say I click the six one, okay? I can go over here, set this one to a one minute. All right, scroll back. I can see what's going on. I got roller coaster on there, but you notice there's no roller coaster move on that. Uh, and we know from drawing this channel that this is a five minute channel. Now you can click this little arrow here and it takes everything off the screen. So now I can go to this one and we can make it bigger. I can do this and then I can go to two minutes and we can restore chart. Okay, so now I've got one minute, two minute, Let's go over here. You just open the chart all the way up. Now, what you can do, if you're just doing roller coaster on all those time frames, Trish, you don't need. Hey, Jasmine, good to see you in here. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me. I'll show you here in just a second, Aunt Jasmine. Uh, if I say I'm gonna hang up, if I do this and I forget in like three three minutes, uh put your message on there again. If I say, hey, everybody, I'm leaving, be like, hey, you didn't answer the question here real quick. Uh, but if you're going on, like say for instance, uh, we're just gonna set this up as roller coaster. Just delete these other ones off because you don't wanna waste the computer power on it uh, doing anything else. Uh, and let me actually, I'm gonna leave, leave it on this first one. Um, because I'm gonna need it to isolate. We'll go down, we have three, let's do four minutes. So I got four and then you click that little arrow and it gives you more space where you can see what's going on better. And then no, we've got five already down here, but let's take off. Let's delete these off, boom, boom, boom. And then let's say you're gonna do 10 minutes. This isn't on here, but let's do, let's just do 15 just because it's easier because it's on here already. Delete these off, delete it off, delete it off. A 10 minute chart actually looks pretty good. Came back up, retest that and then took off down. And then I would also, um, if you have these multiple time frames, I would also delete off, like over here, the Elliott wave, I would delete it off. Uh, maybe, maybe leave bits on there, uh, just where you can get the breakout. Um, that way you're not taxing your computer. Uh, you get this many windows open, even though trading view, trading view is very, very good and does not lock up. Uh, at least I haven't seen it lock up any time that I've been using it. Uh, but all of the, it, it is remembering all of these things, even though you don't have them on your screen, bits is still running on there. So you got eight windows open with bits on there. It's going to be taxing your computer pretty good. So if you do that on here, Trish, now you have, let me close these all out. And we go there, click the little arrow there. Now you have, okay, now you got a possible roller coaster move over here on a one minute. And that Paul uses this one minute a lot to find the breakout when it's going. Like this is showing a possible breakout for long, okay? 
we've busted out of this five minute trend and we're way outside of it. We, so we were, we were good getting out of that trade. Um, and remember earlier when I told you on this four minute, I didn't like the roller coaster. Um, I don't like a roller coaster move that does this where it goes way up inside of there. Um, and now it's going back again. Well, that thing rocketed off there. Okay, now it's hit the entry for roller coaster here to go long on a one minute. But that that's how you can use roller coaster on multiple screens like this. And you could even go even more. I mean, they have like, what is that? Eight, two, four, six, eight charts. If you wanted to go even more time frames, I don't think you need that many time frames. On uh, if you're going to do this, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, literally, um, to get your uh, if you're trying to find just a short, quick scalps for going on there. All right, so let's go back to one page, and then I'm going to get Jasmine's answer on isolating. So let's say five minute chart and let's turn off roller coaster, turn on bits, we're gonna turn on Elliott wave and I'm going to take this start bar to one is what it's originally set at. I'm just gonna do it at one for right now. It's gonna recalculate. Okay, so start bar one is basically going back on, now this is on a continuous chart. So it's going back all the way to the beginning of time on candle number one. That's what that box is. So what I need to go back here where the bottom shows up. Okay, this right here is your, you can see when I hover over it, it blanks over it. But you can see right above my mouse, 3115 is the, wherever I'm moving this is where it's at. You typically want to go from the high or the low of the previous day. Now, if I get up in the morning, I'm going to do the higher low of the overnight session, um, depending on what time frame I'm on. Now, on a five minute, um, this one here, I'm going to look at the high of yesterday. Um, I like that one there, um, just to give me a more accurate count of what's going on. So I just hover over that candle. You can see where it says three. And then down below on the left where it says W5T bias, 3124 is that candle number. So then you just go over here to Elliott Wave, click the sprocket, and then replace that with 3124 and click OK. And there's your Elliott Wave. Now, Let's go over here to, I'm gonna do another one for you. Let's just go to NQ, just so you can see this. I'm gonna take off bits. And one five minute. So on this five minute, I am going to take, what is today, third? We really should take this high over here, but we don't have a lot of bars. So I'm gonna take the low of this one because that's quite a few right here. So if I hover over that, it says, what's, if I hover over this, I want you to get somebody on here, tell me what that candle, what it says on my chart. You tell me what the candle number is. I'm not gonna tell you. Yes. Uh, Atelia, I think is that how you say it? Uh, it works on anything. Doesn't matter, stocks, futures, Forex. Bingo, good job, Jasmine. That, uh, so 96.50, so we're gonna go to Elliott Wave, click that sprocket. Now see where it says 31.24? This is something you gotta keep in mind. It's going to remember whichever, uh, bar count you put in there. So if you change symbols, it's going to be isolating from the wrong number. So uh, I suggest if you have a different workspace for say ES, uh, NQ, YM, whatever you're trading, so that when you isolate, you know that uh, the candle count stays the same no matter what you do on that chart. You know that it's there. 
Uh, I'm working with TradingView, one of my things that I, on my list, Ooh, excuse me guys, one of my things on my list is having a global symbol link so that say you have a full workspace set up like this, you can have a global list and then come over and make a new workspace that has NQ, YM, whatever on 15 minute or 30 minute time frame where you can just see what's going on on all four or five minute. So if one starts jumping around, you can just click back over and see what's going on. So 9650, we are going to go on here, 9650, click OK. It takes about five to seven seconds. And where do we do? Nothing. Isolating from there, 9650. Let's go. Go 9510. We're going to take this low over here. Oh, that's why it didn't take it. 9650. I was like, man, I should have got something out of that. All right. So we had a failed fourth wave. Had a had a fifth wave move right here that went all the way down. It actually went through the target. Came back, turned into a longer three, did a fourth wave pullback, and never it failed. And this would be a good. Let me do a channel if you guys don't mind staying a little bit later. I want to show you this why this failed. Um, so on this NQ five minute, this if you look on here, we came down. We had a a one, two up here, it did a corrective. Came down, this was a three, this was a four, came back up. So this turned into a longer fifth wave move, but actually became a longer three because it hit the fifth wave target, popped back up, and then it kept on going down. So there was a three at one time painted there, and it disappeared. It disappears because it counts as the candles are going. So you're not gonna, you may see a number when it's live that you don't see after the fact looking in the past. So if this was, was a three, this right here was a four on here. So we're gonna draw a channel. Now the channel, you're gonna go from the wave three low, which would be right there to the wave four pullback. And let me put this in here. And then settings, I do not want to extend the lines and close on my fourth wave pullbacks. And you look up my J-Dub tick trader on um, trading view. I have training videos on there on how to set these up. I use close on my fourth wave pullback. All right, you are not going, and hold on a second, let me extend those lines. Okay. You're not going to take a short until we get out of here, out of this channel on this fourth wave pullback. All right. Not only are you not going to take that, even though you came out of that fourth wave pullback, you would not have taken this trade because we were above the six, four moving average, even though it popped through there, you on a fifth wave move down, you want to be below the six, four moving average, which look at this one. This one met the requirements there. It came all the way up, came damn close to uh, screwing up. Let's do another one of these. This was the third wave. Click here to here. And let's extend that. Okay, we got out of there. But you look, it came down, it came back up, came back down. And I'm sure if we drop down to a lower time frame, this probably came back up and retested it. Once you got below the 6.4 moving average right there, that was a good trade to take. 95.80 went all the way down to 95.41, so almost 40 points, 160 ticks, came back up. If you stayed in it, there was no reason to get out of it. Your bias stayed red. 
But if you were measuring this fourth wave pullback uh, up here, you're going to do a, let's see here, Fibonacci retracement. And I don't think, oh, I have it set up on mine, guys, to do a 91.40. Oh, Paul's got it on here. Good. Okay. You want to go to the third way. You put it on the zero line, basically, and then go down here to right here. You can see that candle is where the fourth, the third wave candle was. So you uh, drop it there, and you don't want this to crown past the 140. If you watch my videos on Wednesdays, I don't like taking – a fifth wave move if it has not crowned. It's just my own personal thing that I don't typically get burned on a move if it has a crown. But if you see this, it's just red, 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 red. All those bouncing around in here is red, 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 red still. I don't like that. I like to see some green. So let's do a... Now it says bias. But the bar count is, uh, bias is right here. What we've done, uh, Tim, is we uh, integrated them together so that it's not taking up another line. Uh, the way that coding is for TradingView, you would have to take up another line. And I, you know what I mean? You already have enough real estate on here. So that's what that blue number is, is your bar count uh, right there. So we're going to click another fib for this wave three. And this was wave four. So actually, let me tighten this up a little bit. So let me take off that other fib that I did. And then let's do another one. So you're going to go your wave four pullback, which was right here, to your wave three, which was right here. And if you look, there was no crown, like at all. And the red is getting shorter as this fourth wave pullback's going, it's getting shorter and shorter. Usually it crowns up during that fourth wave and then comes down and it never got the crown. So I wouldn't have taken that. Plus, look at your bias right here. Even when it went, even when it came out, it was red, but look down here at your uh, false, uh, your false breakout stochastic. There's no false breakout on there. But look at, you've got an arrow for a long right here. You've crossed over, Stochastics has crossed over when it should be the other way around. It should be going down. We've, you're, okay, so this Stochastics is telling you, no, do not take a short. The 535 oscillator, my personal opinion, if it doesn't crown, I don't take it. Occasionally, I will if it's a trending day. Sometimes you won't get a crown. Uh, but second reason not to take it, bias uh, is still red that's in here. But so there was one reason to take it was red. Two reasons say no. Stochastic says no. Oscillator says no. Bias does still say short. So you got two no's, one yes. We're above the 6-4 moving average. We need to be below it. Three reasons not to take this trade. And we needed to bust out of this whole, this channel, and it just barely came out of it. We never got uh, below this bottom 6-4 line. It's just not there, man, that, uh, at all. Uh, so... There's kind of, and if you also look over here on your, if you have a volume chart on there, as soon as this uh, candle came down below that 6.4 and pulled back, next candle opened right up on it, came back down again, but look at it, lower volume. Then each one of these was a little bit lower volume, a little bit lower volume. That's not what we want. Next candle was green. There's no, four reasons not to take it. One reason to say yes. Four reasons to say no. What does that equal? No. That uh, typically now, on, now, let's add on bits. So on bits, if we add it on here, 
cyan did not cross over the yellow, okay? And it did not come back up. Look at, um, on this channel, this is the cyan line right here. And I know guys, it's kind of hard to see. Let me make it bigger. The cyan line never came back during this pullback right here where it was supposed to be a fifth wave down. Cyan usually will come up and touch the yellow line and then continue down like if it's a continuing trend. It didn't even get there. Like it just stopped at the bottom, turned down and then turned back up. So there's another reason, no. Now you got five reasons, no, not to take this trade. Um, and then let's see, no roller coaster uh, spot in there. So you have five no's, one yes, no trade. I wouldn't take it. All right, guys, any other questions I can answer for you? And, and don't, you guys, don't feel bad. Uh, I had, uh, I don't know if, I don't see him on here tonight, that I had somebody text me today and they're like, hey, I don't want to bother you to take time away. Guys, I, I'm here for you guys. Now, if I'm busy, I'm going to tell you I'm busy. I got family in town this week, uh, but I'll still, family and a really good friend, I'll still work around my schedule for you guys uh, to help you out. If you're struggling with something, Thanks, Trisha. I really appreciate that. Uh, pass that on to Paul, too. Um, that I really, I try, I mean, if you guys can't tell, I'm not a, a sales, salesy type person on it, that I really want these um, webinars to be about how to use the indicators and how to maximize them. It, and Really, I mean, like I call it, um, Damien asked me the other day about what I want to call these, and I'm like, grade the trade. I mean, it truly um, is, you got to grade it. If you don't get five reasons to say yes, and maybe one no, like say that, by, say the things were flipped around to go long. I mean, that one, well, that's probably not a good one to say long. But if you have five reasons to go wrong and only one go long and only one that says no, depending on what that one no is, you might go ahead and take it. Uh, not on, are you talking about the roller, uh, Altia? Is that the roller coaster scanner? Is that what you're talking about? You're welcome, Tim. That uh, they're, uh, they're all eating at a very nice uh, Shunk Gullies is my favorite place to eat on the water. Oh, well, it's across the street from the uh, water, but they're out there eating without me tonight. So it's, uh, it's okay. I spent all day with them today. I kind of needed a break. If you can't tell, I'm a little tired. I'm like, man, y'all are wearing me out. <laughs> um, okay. If you're talking about um, Elliott Wave, it, uh, it, you've got to do your uh, wave isolation on it to find your spots to get out. Now, bits, roller coaster is gonna give you those signals. Um, you don't have to buy a separate uh, deal for that. The roller coaster is gonna give them to you. Now, we do sell a roller coaster smart list. It's, a, I think, 197 a month. Excuse me, and it's got 21 or 22 symbols in it. And it will, uh, alert you on all these time frames on those 22 symbols. Uh, it doesn't have all the time frames. It has, I believe, one, one, two, four, five, I think 60 minute, 30 minute. There's, uh, you'll have to check it out on the website, tradethefifth.com. Go through there. And I'm happy to uh, demo it for you too if you want me to do it live for you. Just message me on my email on there or through Twitter and I'd be happy to help you guys. You got everybody on here that knows me. Uh, Tim, you know, uh, Greg, I mean, I, I can't, how many different people are on here? Trisha, you know, your husband, I talked to him the other day too. It's, uh, I, I will make time for you to make sure that you figure this out. I want you to be successful. You know, it's, uh, you got to learn, uh, you got to reach out, uh, to learn. I had somebody, 
somebody in a different channel of something else was saying that the Elliott Wave didn't work, that he bought a piece of crap. And it's like, we know on our end, if you've logged in to watch your training videos, he never logged in to watch his training videos. And he was like, I watched all the training videos. No, you didn't. <laughs> I know, I know 100% you didn't log in and you only used it for three days and then you quit, quit using it. And it's like, you got to watch the four hours on LA wave. You got to put your time into trading, man. That's uh, one of the things quotes my brother said the other day and I put it on Twitter. How bad do you want it? If you don't have it, you don't want it bad enough period. And that quote sticks in my head so much because it goes the same way with trading. Do you put in the time to learn how to trade? Do you put in the time? Yeah, I'll tell you, a uh, full-time job for sure. I'm located on the beach. I am in Santa Rosa Beach, Destin, Florida area is where I'm at. Uh, you got to put in the time, you know, you got to put in your channels, put in all your stuff. You can't just turn on your computer at 829 and, you know, think that you're going to make a million dollars. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes into preparation. You know what I mean? Where's the contract uh, coming? Uh, you know, is the contract rolling over on, or is there news coming out if you're trading a stock? Is there, you know, the oil report on Wednesdays? There's just all kinds of stuff you got to be prepared for that a lot of people aren't. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna let you guys go. Yeah, it is amazing. It's expensive. <laughs> it's a, imagine going on vacation. You know how expensive it is to go out and eat and everything? Well, it's like that every single day that you go out, but it is worth uh, every penny of it. I, every time I think I'm gonna leave, I just go down to the beach for an hour and, and then I'm, I don't wanna leave. <laughs> Yep. All right, guys, have a good night. And thank you so much, uh, everybody, for taking time out of your night to come out and hang out with me here. I hope uh, everybody got a good meeting out of this. Thank you, guys. Good night. Bye. I don't know where my dog went. She, she's quiet on me now. See y'all.